Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. You see the title. And the title here about this controlled demolition, it sounds pretty defeatist. It's a doom and gloom type of title in a situation. And I'm a pretty optimistic person. I like to think that there is some hope out there. I still believe in that. However, this video is important because a lot of what I'm about to talk about in this video is already happening. We are accelerating the rate of this controlled demolition. And where we are headed is not good. I've talked about it in the past, but I'm going to take time in this video to talk about it a little bit more and ways to protect yourself. So let's explore! You're looking at usdebtclock.org. And I believe these numbers kind of tell us the tale of where we are at in terms of the debt and the debt per citizen. There's a lot of different numbers that are ticking away very fast on this very popular website. However, there is another uh, website that I'm going to be referring here to in just a moment. But a member of the community made me aware of this Kim.com, who I'm not all that familiar with. In fact, a lot of uh, what is uh, talked about in places like Zero Hedge, I do kind of question to a degree. And I'm not even sure that I necessarily agree with all the numbers that we're going to be talking about here. But the overall message, I think, is quite clear. And uh, this is a series of tweets that this article refers to. And it gives a little bit of commentary, and I'm going to be adding my own in on this, that I think really does uh, give us a sense of where we are headed. I'm also in the midst of reading a book that talks about this as well that I think is a much greater source as, as to what's happening. And I do trust the sources and the author of this book. I'll talk about that here momentarily as well. Uh, New Zealand Tech CEO Kim.com did the math on the United States sovereign debt. And he tweeted a thread about it saying that it may be the most important thread that he may ever make. Surprisingly, it's still up there, but, uh, you know, as far as where big tech is and, and what is, um, you know, uh, um, siphoned through and deleted and banned, it's kind of a surprise it's still here. He explains that the U.S. spending and debt have spiraled out of control and the government can only raise the money it needs by printing more of it, which means that hyperinflation is guaranteed. Now, I'm not necessarily... Um, going to jump to that conclusion right away, but I think in due course, if we're not careful, if we keep doing what we're doing, it's going to get there. However, there have been, been some recent activity that leads us to think that uh, we may not have hyperinflation, but inflation and out of control inflation is another matter and it's still occurring. He says that this has been going on for decades and there's no way to fix it. And the U.S. got away with this for so long because the U.S. dollar is a world reserve currency and there's this is another area that i do have a little bit of pushback on because there are ways to fix it um but is it too late i don't know it has been going on for decades that's for sure and that's true uh one thing is that every time that we get ourselves uh, dig a deeper hole it becomes a lot harder to get out and becomes a much more difficult to fix problems which is why I believe that his ultimate um, uh, analysis here is probably correct. When the U.S. government prints trillions, it, it is thereby robbing Americans and the entire world in what he calls the biggest theft in history. We're witnessing it right now. I hold in my hand a dollar bill that has lost about 8.6 of its value over the last year. That's inflation, folks. He says the U.S. total debt is at $90 trillion. Of course, we look back over here, we see it's a third of that, according to the official numbers here. Uh, but we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, so, which together is $169 trillion in U.S. unfunded liabilities, and that totals $259 trillion, which, which is $778,000 per U.S. citizen, or... $2,067,000 per U.S. 
taxpayer. Now, uh, he says the U.S. values of U.S. assets combined, every piece of land, real estate, all savings, all companies, everything that all citizens, businesses, entities in the state own is worth $193 trillion. Our total debt, $259 trillion minus our total net worth, uh, $193 trillion equals negative $66 trillion of debt and liabilities after every asset in the U.S. has been sold off. So if we sold everything, it's, it's in existence of the world, including all of our gold and silver, our TVs, our phones, our homes, everything inside of it, our, you know, everything of value has been sold off. That's $193 trillion. We'd still be $66 trillion in debt, according to this. And that's more than double our official national debt figure. Now, let's go to this other website called truthinaccounting.org. It has a little different numbers here. In fact, let's refresh this and see. And there it is. It's ticking away here. It's showing over $31 trillion in debt. And, uh, and it says the truth is $142 trillion. $142.5 trillion. Uh, each taxpayer share is 919000 So the taxpayer share is less than what uh, uh, the um, Kim.com and Zero Hedge is showing. So the number is a little bit different here. But regardless, U.S. published national debt consists of debt held by the public, intragovernmental holdings, including debt held by Social Security and Medicare trust funds. So uh, they include, I think, some things that aren't in the U.S. debt clock, and I guess that's what this is, Social Security and Medicare trust funds. It does not include total unfunded Social Security and Medicare promises. And this amount is updated periodically to coincide to with the debt of the penny. And the truth, which is the larger number here, uh, represents assets and liabilities reported in the financial report of the U.S. government. Unfunded Social Security and Medicare promises based on assumptions. This is how they calculate the truth. As you can see here what the federal government has, what the federal government owes. So the federal government only has about $6 trillion in assets. And so when you put all this math together of all these things, publicly held debt, pension and retire, retiree, healthcare liabilities, unfunded Social Security, Medicare, and other liabilities. It's about $142 trillion. So that's a lot of money. So this is where this is coming from. That gives you a little bit of an angle there. The numbers are a little bit different here. And I think that in the end here that they are showing this uh, uh, pretty much how they calculate these numbers. In any event, we are in debt and we are beyond, as, as the title of this says, beyond bankrupt. No matter how you look at it, no matter which numbers of these that you use. Uh, so our total debt, $259 trillion, and with the $600 trillion of debt and liabilities after every asset in the U.S. has been sold off, even if the U.S. could sell all these assets at the current value, which is impossible, it would still be broke. And this is where the Great Reset comes in. You've heard me talk about that recently. It is a controlled demolition of the global markets economies, and the world as we know it. A shift into a new dystopian future where the elites are the masters of the slaves without the cosmetics of democracy. Now that is something that is confounded and backs up with what exactly they have been doing really for quite a while now. And it all goes back down to this ESG. It's called environmental social governance. You've heard me talk about that before and I've referenced it based off of this book that I'm in the midst of reading called The Great Reset. And I'm not much of a reader, so I'm very slowly getting into this thing, but I'm at the point uh, where I'm getting ready to start Chapter 3, which is about climate change, which is the catalyst for a new world order. That's the subtitle of that, of that chapter. And let me tell you something, folks. I'm going to stop right here. They're already doing it. They're already, the corporations around this country have, have already utilizing ESG. And really, it's not only that, it's, it's a, the ESG is in a sense a fancy term for wokeness. Um, that's right. Now, woke is, is an off the cuff term uh, that has plagued uh, our society here, especially over the last couple of years. 
uh, becoming woke. And it's not just about racial justice. Uh, that's uh, certainly a big part of it. And that will be a part of all of this, by the way, racial justice. It's also, also about uh, the LGBTQAI plus and whatever else, whatever other acronym you want to use for that. It's about that. Um, and it's about environmental justice as well. Um, it's all included in that wokeness. And what is wokeness? Think of wokeness as political correctness on steroids, to where it changes our very language, to where it changes the language we use, to where we have, where we can be condemned just in how we reference other genders. Uh, it is bad news. And they're going to take it and, and utilize it at the corporate level. They're already doing it and at the global level and tie that all in with government corporations government uh, global organizations ngos everything is utilizing this esg model and that's what's going to be the foundation for the great reset bad news all the way around it takes away sovereignty not only individual sovereignty but national sovereignty as well it won't be painted as such at the beginning and what's going to be the uh, what's going to be the precipice for all of this? CBDC, central bank digital currencies, which had the foundation of this digital ledger system, uh, like a blockchain. Uh, it won't be the blockchain, the same blockchain that uh, uh, cryptocurrencies use. It'll be their own that they control, and uh, it's pretty scary. And that's something that they're are, they're working towards. Uh, how can it be stopped? Um, well. Uh, there are ways to slow it down. There are ways to stop it. The best way to stop it is national and individual sovereignty and fighting for that. But more on that in a moment, um, because I think there's ways we can we can fight against this and ways to protect ourselves. And we're going to get to that momentarily. Um, he notes that the world has changed so much in recent years and how nothing seems to make sense anymore. And that's true. Blatant corruption and the obvious gaslighting propaganda media and the erosion of our rights, and he doesn't know where it's all going, and he finishes the thread by saying, where's the end game? And that's where it stops. Uh, but there's some things that happen in between there, I think it tells us too. Um, Harrison Smith, the American Journal, says it's a pyramid scheme. The people uh, perpetrating the pyramid scheme are in charge of everything. They're going to sacrifice humanity in order to maintain their system. The world economy is being collapsed. The food supply system is being destroyed. The energy that we rely on to maintain civilization is being curtailed and eliminated and will be forced into the Great Reset where we will own nothing and be happy. Now, uh, again, some of this stuff, and I'm here, talks about some of these uh, uh, food supplies, some of these uh, poultry farms burning down and, and water supply places and say that's all staged. I don't wouldn't go that far, but nonetheless... You know, and also COVID um, as well, and all these different things. But one thing is for sure um, uh, is that there's some statistics here that give us some backing up from where we are and why they aren't so quick to stop it because they want this to happen. Uh, this may be the most important thread I ever make is, is kind of what he says. He emphasizes this, and the leaders are essentially are planning it. The United States did not have a surplus or a balanced budget since 2001. The last 50 years, the U.S. only had four years of profit. And in fact, it really wasn't a profit, really, per se. It's just we had a budget surplus for those budget years. Uh, we never, uh, the last time that we had no debt was during the President Andrew Jackson's administration. And he fought against the big banks. Uh, but nonetheless, this is uh, the tale, the chart that shows this. There's this four years um, of where this that's coming from uh, the Heritage Foundation. And then we see the money printing frenzy that we've got here. U.S. spending and debt have spiraled out of control and the government can only raise the money if it needs by printing it. This causes inflation. And the reason here's at the Kim.com's tweet. The reason the, uh, why the U.S. got away with it for so long, because U.S. dollar is a world's reserve currency. Nations everywhere hold the U.S. dollar as a secure asset. So when the U.S. government prints trillions, it's robbing Americans and the entire world. And this is quite telling from a 60 Minutes per interview. Say you simply flooded the system with money. Yes, we did. That's another way to think about it. We did. Where does it come from? Do you just print it? We print it digitally, so we, you know, we as a central bank, we have the ability to create money. 
digitally, and we do that by buying treasury bills or, or bonds or other government guaranteed securities, and that, that actually increases the money supply. We also print actual currency, and we distribute that through the Federal Reserve banks. Now, there that is. That's Jerome Powell, and they've been doing this for decades. Uh, the U.S. is now bankrupt for some time. What's coming is a nightmare potentially here if we don't change course very, very soon and we don't put a stopgap to this and preserve our sovereignty, not only our national sovereignty and being able to handle our, handle our spending, but also our individual sovereignty and respect that. If not, mass poverty and a new system of control which in a sense has already begun, especially with the corporate media and corporations in bed with the government. And uh, so that's kind of where it is. And again, this kind of goes back and repeats some of this stuff. So uh, what's happening here? Where is, what is the way to protect yourself? The way to protect yourself is to be responsible for yourselves. And uh, what's the best way to do that is, is to um, help protect yourself from inflation by stocking up on goods and services, non-perishable food stuff, as far as other things, necessity that you need uh, so that you can be prepared so that you're not a victim of what they are doing. And the next thing is to fiscally uh, protect yourself uh, with gold and silver and also dollars outside of the banking system. In other words, having some cash, even though it's losing value um, uh, at a rate of about 1% per month, uh, these dollars, having them outside of the banking system, uh, is, a, is a good start. It's good to have some outside in a savings. But gold and silver, uh, yes, indeed, this is certainly uh, the best way to protect yourself financially and, um, and, and to be able to and be able to have it on hand as stores of value uh, for long-term savings against an ever-inflated dollar and against ESG in general. I mean, and, and people are asking, because in my last video where I talked about the Great Reset, people say, well, how are we going to be able to utilize gold and silver if everything is tracked? Which means that every time you buy gold and silver, they're going to know about it and they're going to potentially punish you for it. It'll lower your ESG score. Well, some of these bullion companies uh, are already utilizing ESG governance um, or ESG, ESG governance um, in their transactions and how they mine it. But nonetheless, I will talk about that in a separate video because I think it's a very important question and, uh, and how gold and silver will help um, save, you, save you from that system uh, in, in due course if it gets down to the point where uh, it's dystopian. Uh, and I hope we don't get there anytime soon, but some fear that we could see that. Um, but gold and silver uh, from these precious metals uh, refiners and, and and mints around the world that are recognizable, such as you see here. Wouldn't it be nice to have that kilo gold kangaroo? Oh, man. Uh, you know, that is kind of where uh, we are headed, folks. And more and more people that wake up to gold and silver, that the metals themselves, once they are in your pos uh, possession, they have no agenda. No matter what's stamped on them, no matter what the message that could be on said uh, a, a bullion, uh, coins and rounds and bars, and the metals themselves are where the value is at. So um, it's about having it. And again, I will talk about in another video how gold and silver could be transacted and utilized to protect yourself. But the answer is gold and silver. The answer is protection of your, um, for your uh, self in terms of your food, in terms of inflation, in terms of uh, stockpiling those goods and services, prepping, as it were, um, and as part of that preparation in terms of food, water, and necessities in that regard, one of those necessities, make no mistake, is weapons and bullets, guns and bullets. Uh, that is definitely a um, something to protect yourself uh, if the worst case scenario were to happen. I cannot stress that enough, folks. Be very well protected. Do not ignore those other things. This channel is a precious metals channel, but food, water, necessities, um, toiletries, um, even alcohol, things that can you, you can use for, to, to trade and barter. It's not just gold and silver, but most importantly, to have the guns and the bullets to protect you. 
with emphasis on bullets, by the way. You can have all the guns in the world, but if you don't have the bullets, then you're, you're, you're out of luck. And again, I'm not saying that there's not a way out from this, but we are accelerating uh, uh, at a pace that is going to be to the point of no return sooner rather than later. Uh, what can you do in the meantime to slow or stop this? The best thing to do is to vote for the most conservative politician um, that believes in individual liberty and responsibility uh, in November here in the United States or in your country, wherever you live. Uh, vote for the most conservative, uh, fiscally responsible, and ones that believe in individual liberty and responsibility. And for president, uh, vote the same way. Vote for uh, people who believe in national sovereignty and uh, for uh, the free markets and individual liberty and responsibility. Uh, there you go, because those are crucial. Those are more important than ever before, and they're being eroded away from us at an accelerated rate. And it's troubling and it's concerning. And, um, and I fear that if we don't act soon uh, at the ballot box and do what we can do to protect ourselves for the things that we have control of, ourselves and our family, and then we are going to become victims of this. We don't want to be victims. So I hope you found this video insightful. Uh, please share this uh, anywhere and everywhere you can. I think it's an important message. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.